Today we're using Island Trevally and whatever this thing is to make this. I was super stoked lately when I found some of these Island Trevally or false bluefin Trevally at a good size. There's been tons around lately, but only really ever small juveniles. In the water, these guys have some stunning blue fins and some bright yellow spots down their side. Unfortunately, the camera just doesn't quite pick it up. Even after hanging in the fridge for a few days, there's still a hint of those beautiful electric blue fins just there. This hanging process in the fridge or the dry aging is easily the best way to store fish that I've found. It allows the meat of the fish to rest and relax post rigor mortis while also kind of drying out and concentrating the flavors of the oils. And this fish is about three days old at this point, and I tell you what, it's as good as the day it went in, and some would argue even better. I have a whole video up next week going over my process for hanging and dry aging, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that. So let's start by removing the head and the wings just here. Trunking the body with the Victorinox 12cm boning knife. Hands down, my favorite knife for filleting fish in the whole world, and the link for that is in the description below. I also have a video coming out pretty soon on why I believe this is the world's best filleting knife. Trunking the body like this just removes heaps of bulk from the board and allows me to butcher the fish with plenty of room to work. Cutting in along the dorsal line of the fish here, I'm using the very tip of the knife, cutting down on an angle towards the spine. And a sharp knife is going to make a world of difference here. I like to sharpen my knives probably around every third time I use them. And if you're interested in the knife block I use, I'll have a link down in the description for that as well. Once I find the spine, I begin to work my knife along these bones, using them as a guide to separate the meat. You want to hear the knife clicking on these bones to get a nice clean fillet. Separate the fillet all but the rib bones and then slide your knife in behind them. Holding the fish either on the top or from the tail, push the knife through the bones and peel off that fillet. Doing this, I find I have far less wastage than cutting over the rib bones. I like to put down a piece of paper towel along the bloodline so I don't get the board filthy when I do the other side. We're going to repeat what we just did and then you'll have a couple of tidy fillets just like this. I like to skin my fillets with a slightly stiffer blade as well, and this large Victorinox chopping knife, also a link in the description below for that, is perfect for this. A little left on there, but these small scaled fish can be a little fiddly sometimes, and we'll just tidy that up with the smaller knife, and then we're on. Hang in there guys, just the ribs and pin bones to go now. Slide your knife under those rib bones and use them as a guide to push your way up to the lateral line, separating them from the fillet. Once you've done that, finish the cut by pushing your knife down towards the belly. And here you'll see I actually missed one of the rib bones, but that's fine. We'll just go back and do exactly the same thing until we've got rid of all of those rib bones. Lastly, let's separate that top loin, that premium chunk, and let's remove the pin bones. And there's no point using tweezers here because we only really want small slices anyway. Now here's the pretty part. These cuts are only small, so I'm going to slice them down on the angle just to give us more surface area on our slices. Ideally here, you'd use a longer bladed knife or something even sharper. To achieve clean sashimi slices, you want as little sawing motion in the blade as possible. One clean slice from the base of the blade to the tip is ideal. work your way through these slices keeping them all at a similar kind of thickness and I like to restack them in the same orientation and this will help you with plating later on when you want to make some nice pretty patterns While the loins look pretty tidy or sliced up, the belly unfortunately isn't as presentable. And I'd argue though, after a little dry aging, the sinew can kind of break down. And with that higher fat content you get in the belly, especially in winter like we're enjoying now, 
it actually lends itself to an even tastier bite. And on bigger fish, you got some room to trim it up and make it more presentable for the plate. But these smaller fish, there isn't really any point. So we just enjoyed it al natural. This is actually horseradish and it's very similar to wasabi. And in fact, it's probably what you've eaten 90% of the time when you thought you were having wasabi. It's far easier and cheaper to grow. Uh, and it's definitely something you can grow at home. And this one's from my sister's house and I actually replanted the parts that I didn't use in my garden. I'm just gonna start out by peeling the weathered looking skin off this thing and expose some of the brighter flesh underneath. I'm gonna chop off the dried up ends and then hit it with the microplane. And it's pretty fibrous stuff so the microplane kind of helps to break it down. Let's add a bunch of Japanese mayo to the mix. And this stuff is a banger. It's sweeter than your regular mayo and definitely some more MSG in there to add a little richness to that flavor. Let's blend that up now. You could do this in a food processor, but the immersion blender is pretty easy and way more convenient here. As always, I'll have a link in the description below for this and all kinds of other products I like to use in the kitchen. I'm also gonna add a splash of sake and blend that in. Doing it this way achieved a very mild heat, but it definitely brought out a lot more of the flavor from the horseradish, which was a nice subtle twist on the mayo. Bang that into a sauce bottle and set it aside. The little size of these bottles makes it way easier to utilize smaller quantities in the kitchen at home. And I think this cost me like three bucks and for the control you get over sauces when plating, it's well worth it, I reckon. Again, links down below for that one. Let's arrange the slices around the dish and keeping the orientation all of the way around. And this is where the stacking you saw earlier really comes in handy. And work your way around the dish until it's full and then let's drizzle over some ponzu. Enough that we get a shallow layer across the bottom so the slices are always touching some of that beautiful sauce. And now take your squeezy bottle and with a tip close to the slices, almost touching, squeeze out a dollop onto each piece. Finish it off with a sprinkle of aonori. And there it is. Island Trevally Sashimi with horseradish mayo and ponzu sauce.